Welcome back to Bright Price, a culture or the new slavery. In this third episode of a five-part documentary that will be aired weekly, Mifumi brings you exclusive footage of this very emotive issue that captures the views of extraordinary people who have experiences of Bright Price and of those who have championed its reform, going way back to the first National Commission on the Status of Women held in 1965, which produced the Kalema Report on Women's Rights. Today we will be exploring the vices of Bride Price. That is, we will be looking at the problems associated with this so-called cherished practice. When someone has died and you have to respect the dead. And so keeping them there just because you want to claim some money or cows, whatever, which is actually going to get finished in the next few years, I think is disrespectful of the dead. When someone dies, they deserve to be, to be respected and laid to rest with respect. You see, people becoming even unkind to dead bodies. And they leave the dead body to remain there rotting while you're looking for some animals to go and pay. This is 21st century. Is it very important for us to continue with that type of mentality? I think no. No, and that one, I don't agree with it. Does bride price really treat women equally? What is the bottom line? It's the culture and it's the practice in this community that bride price has to be refunded. Usually we, under our women reception center where we are supporting women to access justice, the moment a case passes through court, before even judgment is passed, the magistrate will request for a bride price refund. A woman who is suffering from HIV suffers even double uh, uh, pain. Because one, the moment her husband dies, she's thrown out of the home, claiming she's the one who brought in the, the, the infection. And after the husband has died, they throw her out of the home and she's asked to refund bride price. It affects both even men. Where it will lead even a man said the small land, piece of land he has to pay for the disease, which is really very sad. Bride price makes men think women include the list of property they own. The, the response you get from the men, you are my property, the money is mine, everything is mine. If you bride price has been paid, it is used as a reason why you can be beaten, you have nowhere to go, and when the man wants you out and you, you can't go out, then of course the next thing is going to be beating you all the time. Mm -hmm. And it has caused some women's death. Because women are stuck in abusive marriages because they cannot have refund the bride price. And this goes to all customary marriages and even Mohammedan or, or, or Muslim marriages. Because in Muslim marriages, Mahara is paid direct to the woman and is demanded by the woman, but must be refunded if the woman wants to leave the marriage. So if you don't have that money to refund as a woman, you cannot leave the marriage. And if the marriage is abusive, by the time you think of leaving a marriage, there are reasons. Some women have died in abusive marriages. In the villages, these men always believe that once they have paid bride price, their women are properties, their properties. So they will always tell them, I paid my bride price to your parents, so you have to do what I tell you. If you don't do what they tell, they always tell you, go home, go back to your home and bring back my hens or my chicken or my cows, my goats. Yes, there is a lot of trouble arising from bride price because the man practically feels he owns the wife. As long as he has paid a price on her, he has full authority over her. And he can treat her as he chooses and he quotes, these are my cows, I paid for her. 
So this uh, pretext of handing, hiding behind statements uh, of, of interpretation in such a way that um, people would argue that, no, this is simply an appreciation, a gift, is to be impractical, it is to be idealistic. In reality, it is actually a commercial transaction. And sometimes people will say to us that I can't wed because the parents of my wife have refused. I've refused to let her marry me unless I pay this bride price. There are a lot of issues, complications that lead, that come from bride price, including violence, because the man feels that he has spent a lot on this woman and she shouldn't just be doing anything she chooses. So it takes away her freedom of choice. She's tied to the choice of what the man wants and dictates. And I think that is wrong. Uh, that whole thing, even the church knows that marriage should be unconditional. It does not insist on bride price. Some men take it like an advantage. Because he paid you, he thinks whatever wrong you do, he has to take his force on you, like I can slap you, after all I paid you. Which is not good, because a man may feel superior, because maybe they charged much things and he paid, and now he thinks he's on top because he paid you. Yeah, you will find like a woman after a bride price is being paid, she is being denied her rights and then she is being taken as a slave. Or Even she can't own her own dress she is putting on. Yeah, because after paying the bride price, even her parents denies her. Even if she's being beaten and she decides to go to her parents and uh, tell them about her problems, they will only chase her back to go to her husband because she was paid for. She becomes like a commodity. To me, I don't see any merit with the, this uh, bride price. The disadvantage with it, one, it makes women to be slave. While we're talking about the equality, even the Constitution is very clear, talking about the equality. Is that an equality? Two, it has caused that, and ours is not even bride, okay, real selling. I don't know, that term may be bride price. It may be soft word, but ours here is real selling of girls, whereby you find the girl is forced to go and get man, and then they pray, they pay the animals. Then another issue we also talk about is education. It is, has contributed a lot to low performance and low education in this district, especially girl child. When they're still young, you find their parents encourage them to go and get married at the expenses of going to school. What results? What's the end effect? Poverty. And the scenario is, you find a young girl of around 14 getting married to a boy maybe of 16. All of them are young children. They're not yet 18. They're not yet adult. The next issue, the girl's parent asking for bride price. They, uh, you know our community here, they go on dividing land. You see this boy, you find him maybe with one and a half acres of land or, one, or just a half acre or one acre. What's next? He will sell the small land he has to go and take two or three cows. Then at the end of the day, they will start producing even ten children, but they will stay in total poverty, minus even small item, which is land. But you find some people laughing there and they're supporting it. And this animal, when you take there, what happens? Within two or three days, they will sell it or it will die. There will be no effect that maybe it is increasing wealth in society. Do men like paying bright price? They don't like paying bride price because they cannot uh, find it. They have no money. And increasing uh, poverty and lack of employment is making it virtually impossible to get uh, all those five cows, five goats, and all those things which they want. It has caused poverty, both to a person who is marrying. Because a man will labor that he wants to take dowry, 
at uh, the parents in law's home. It can bring about even theft. After negotiations have been for the price of this girl, if the boy doesn't have these uh, things, he goes to steal, and in the end, it can bring problems in the whole family, causing continuous poverty in that home. There is no progress. Once you have a bad beginning, you'll remain in that poverty for good. Then secondly, do we know what promotes defilement? Is this paying off this bride, bride price? Well, we're saying, no, we don't want it. People look at uh, bride price as, 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 as a way of making money. And they are excited about having young girls, you know, uh, produced. And that's why at an age of uh, between 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a girl is quickly married off and they end up with just small items. Mm -hmm. So there is that uh, 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 relationship between defilement and, and, uh, and, 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 and bride price. Mm -hmm. Only adults can go into marriage as two equal partners. So we should keep children out of it. But the whole practice of bride price has pulled children into this, this practice and exploited them. It has robbed them of their childhood. We know of young children being removed out of school. I have so many examples I could talk about, but a very good one is this 14-year-old girl who, who was forcefully being married off to a much older man who was HIV positive and that child fought to keep her childhood, right? All this in the name of bride price. This is a case that happened in Tororo, and I'm sure there are so many cases around. How are we going to protect our children if we were are selling them into marriage, if we are exchanging them for goods and, and, and services? These children's body are not, uh, bodies are not ready for marriage, and we know what comes with it? We have, Uganda has one of the highest maternal and child mortality rates in Africa. And, and all this is because younger and younger children are being forced to bear other children. And this ends up with mortality during the time of birth. So how are we going to protect our children? If we say we, 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 this is a culture that we want to harness. You know here there is a culture of, 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 of bride price, whereby a man is made to pay some, you know, to, to bring some number of cows and goats and some small money. And so some of the parents are excited about these small animals and the money and uh, they don't care about the long term uh, uh, project of the girl, that if she studies and goes like to university, she can come out and become a better one and even get better bride price. But what has been happening is that uh, they, they, they end up getting something, you know, that is not even enough, that is not even equivalent to this girl. Uh, we've had cases like in Mela where some young girl was defiled at about 12, 13 years, and uh, the father was given a cock, which cock was sick and it even died. And uh, because it was a poor family and the defiler was a poor man, uh, he was charged 50,000 shillings. He managed to raise 15,000, leaving a balance of 35, and they married off the girl. And when we intervened, it was a crime, according to the people and, uh, and, and the leaders, LCs. Yeah. Uh, because what happened was that uh, they ended up reprimanding this young girl and the mother. The mother was caned, the girl was caned and warned never to do such a thing, that how could she report her husband? You can imagine a girl of 12, mm -hmm. and they were referring to this man as a husband. So when the LCs, you know, came in, they, 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 they fined the father and uh, the man paid the cock, I mean brought in the cock and the small money. The cock died after one day. Some men misuse after they have uh, paid the dowry. They take it, they don't refer it to as maybe a gift or an appreciation to the parents for having maybe brought up uh, such a nice uh, girl for him. But instead, they assume they have now bought. The woman becomes now the property of the, the man. Whatever the woman does, it should be for the man. Even if maybe one could do, feel like perhaps helping the relatives, uh, you realize uh, some women are actually tied up. I like was sharing with the, one of my colleagues. In fact, he's a working class. But where a man begins demanding for your card, where is it, where is it, 
he's the one supposed to handle because he paid the dowry. Whatever you have to do should be in his hands. So I think instead of these men perhaps paying dowry, let it be just an appreciation. It's just a gift so that even if they come to a disagreement, there is nothing like maybe paying it back. Because what I know, some parents also face it rough. After they have been given the dowry, the little man or what, they share with the relatives. But now after the disagreement of the, their daughter and the husband, a man will want the dowry back. Now how will that poor man, and maybe he's even dead, it's an uncle who is around, where do you expect an uncle now to solicit again those things that were given to the brother? So if it can be known to both parties that it's just a gift, let it be a gift. Otherwise, most women have suffered because of the right price. That, you know, the man um, decides to uh, become violent in, 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 in a relationship simply because he feels you are now his property, he owns you, so when you do something wrong, he will hit you. That is the danger of it. So that's why I was saying in the first place that bride price is fine as long as the practice is not abused, it's not turned into something else. Back home where you come from, you find a woman with the husband, if she's like and the husband goes with her to the garden, she comes back, when, after, uh, when they have finished digging, back home you see a woman carrying a baby, the woman is carrying either a bunch of matoke or a jerry can of water, and on top of that she will be carrying her hoe and her husband's hoe. And you see the husband in front of her walking very well and the woman suffering behind. You know, there's something about it being an official uh, way of marrying and there's also something about it being a very severe problem on women because they're taken as people who are dependent, people whom they are paid for. They cause lack of income in the man's home because he has to gather all his goats and cows and take it to the girl's home. And then the women are used as labor to pay back for this bride price. We know what men say when they hit women, right? In Tororo, they say, um, I'm only hitting my cows. When they hit their wives and somebody asks, why are you hitting that woman like that? I am only hitting my cows because he paid those cows in exchange for her and is treating her as such. In, 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 in Bugwere land, they say, they describe a woman as a drum. A woman is like a drum. Why? What do we do with drums? We beat them. Don't forget to catch this controversial issue Sunday at 4.30 p.m. For a repeat on Saturday at 5 p.m. Brought to you by Mifumi and showing exclusively on NTV.